Hi, I'm Isla and I work at the sewing studio and as you can definitely see I'm not Katrina but today I'll be showing you some of my sewing tips as in my part time I'm a fashion designer and use a lot of tailoring elements so I'll be showing you the hand round buttonhole using a Benina machine and also a buttonhole on the Benina. I moved down to Cornwall for fashion design, so in front of me is my final collection at uni where I started exploring with different techniques. And so you've got handbound buttonholes with jackets where you can add embroidered details, or if you wanted to, you could have it so that you didn't have to do the finishing hand detail and just have a um, invisible buttonhole. And then with newer jackets that I've been making, I've been using the buttonholes to create reversible jackets. So it still works on both sides and then you can add buttons on both sides with a hand drawn lining. So with the hand bound buttonhole, I use it to incorporate detail and added finishing touches to garments or to cushions or to anything that you want to add buttonholes onto. I'm using two bits of fabric today. So what I'll have is this will be my final fabric and the detail, which is the pop of color on the buttonhole will be this. When you're doing a buttonhole, normally just on this machine, you don't get that different fabric because it's just stitching. So with this, you want to place your fabric and actually incorporate it so that it already has a fold on your final fabric. Because with your button, you're going to want to stitch it on one side and have the fold come over so that then you can finish it on the other side so that it's completely covered and neat. Um, so you place your fabric so that they are wrong sides together. So you have your red on top like this and on your Benina machine you change the setting so that number 59 you're able to just have the stitch which is in a rectangle stitch. I normally use buttons that are at least 2.5 centimeters. Um, two centimeters is fine but for this you want them to be slightly bigger. So this again 23 millimeters Go back out. So that is your buttonhole box that has been created. And we'll go from this process to then it will eventually look like this. So with this buttonhole, you want to be able to snip into the box. So imagine a straight line straight down the middle, snip into it, and then in the corners, you are cutting into each corner as if you're making two triangles on either side. Once you've done that, you fold the fabric straight through so the detail of the buttonhole comes through onto the other side. And that gives that uh, rectangle that you have sewn. From this point on, you want to then heat press iron this down. So now that it is pressed down, you then, on the other side, flip it and you want to create your box shapes. So you fold it as if you're folding a letter on both sides. And again, return to the iron after you've done that. And from that side now, it will look like a letter box. By ironing it down, um, it will keep it in place, but it's up to you. You can add pins to make sure that it stays in place. I normally don't, um, but so that you add more uh, infrastructure onto this buttonhole, you will want to change your foot onto a straight stitch and stitch on top so that those pleats that you've just created do stay down. So that's what I'll just do now. And so you come off your buttonhole setting back onto the straight stitch number one 
and line up your fabric So now you've sewn down both sides, make sure that you snip all the threads. And the last finishing touch you need to do before the final hand stitching is to sew down these triangles so that you have them on the final fabric. This step keeps the buttonhole together. Now that you've done this, you'll end up with both sides and you're able to go in and neaten it up by snipping it down to the size that you've already got. This will stop the fabric bulking with, in your jacket so you won't have an excess of fabric. Then you want to fold it in half so that is your buttonhole. I normally leave on the side of my button, buttonholes on jackets, I normally leave at least a centimetre so that, yeah, it just looks like a smart finish. So by allowing more fabric, you're able to decide how much space you want. Um, and then from there, you want to iron it down. And for the finishing detail, you want to add pins through each corner of, of your buttonhole. And then when you come through onto the other side, you're able to, uh, you're able to then snip in similar thing with what you did, but this is through only one layer of fabric. And before you get to the pins that you've put in place, you snip into the corners. Then take out the pins. Your bottom hole is so nearly finished. And you just turn in the box that you've created. So now with a blanket stitch that's going to be hand stitched around to stitch this bit down, your bottom hole is working. And if you take the button, you're able to, it's a working bottom hole and you're just blanket stitching around the whole buttonhole. So I've just finished hand stitching this buttonhole. So now this buttonhole is all done. Uh, that's your front side. And then on the re reverse side is the hand stitching, but it's done in a way that if you did want to make a reversible jacket, you could because it's all completely covered. And just to show your button, slots through very easily. So just to go over what we've um, been learning through this tutorial is that when you're using this machine, you can use a quick and easy buttonhole. And that's really good for when you've got loads of buttons that you want to be stitching. And it's very time efficient. In contrast to this handbound buttonhole, it takes a lot longer, even though it's more detail, it looks beautiful. So if you're looking for a finishing touch that has something unique, then I would use this personally. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll also give it a go yourselves. We'd love to see your handbound buttonholes, especially in the fabrics that we also um, sell on the sewing studio. And like I said at the start, my name is Isla. I'm a fashion designer and hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of me on this show.